Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday. Almost the weekend is here, 4th of July. And I just want to say thank you for watching. It's been incredible. Today, we're going on career week as the whole week. And we have a dear friend of mine, very someone that I really appreciate all his input. And he is an expert on resumes. Career coordinator, he's been doing a fantastic job at JCT for Education. Natalia, hola. Maria, hola, JCT for Education. I'm waiting for our guests to show up so we can go live and go for resumes. So if you're here, whether you're a high school student, going to college, you are in college, you're going to graduate school, we're gonna also talk about LinkedIn, we're gonna talk about how to update your resume on LinkedIn and so forth. Alejandro, you ready? I'm ready to invite you over, my friend. So here you are. Two, three, pa, 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 JCT for Education for you, Juan Catamayo. Who is behind the camera? Alejandro. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. How's everything? How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, welcome to the live on JCT for Education with Juanca. Thank you, man. How's Good. your day going? Is your, is your door open right now? It is. Give me one second. You want to close it for a second? Uh, Absolutely. Those are the things that we run when we run lives. So we're just going to avoid the door from outside. And we're with Alejandro Merino. He's a expert on resume building. So let's see. Let's see. Right now he stepped down to close his office door and to avoid some noise so we can focus on this live. Sorry about that. No worries. Ale Alejo, welcome back. Uh, this is career week for JCT for Education. We have been running successful lives every day. And I'm really excited because we will have students, parents, professionals, universities, and so forth jumping in and out. And the videos are housed on YouTube channel, JCT for Education. So you're ready to rock and roll? Absolutely. OK, Alejo, you, you, how did you get into hospitality? I want to I wanna know that because that's your background. Uh, well, I actually am originally from New York, but my family moved to Miami when I was just around 15, 16. I started in security, and funny enough, I accidentally wound up in the hospitality industry. I went for a security position, and they didn't have anything available, and they gave me a regular front desk position. Okay, and uh, how many years have you spent in the hospitality industry? Ooh, we're talking about more than 16 years now. 16 years, and uh, so yeah. you, you've seen it all. Uh, you've seen from South Beach, Brickle, oh, yeah. all over Miami, you've seen everything, huh? Oh yeah, Miami is, uh, when you first start out in the hotels, they try to put you on the graveyard shift, which is the overnight, so working in Miami especially is very interesting environment. But yeah, I mean, working in the hospitality industry has been very amazing, honestly. I love the customer service industry. And, and that's why probably you do such an amazing job with uh, uh, supporting professionals with resume building. So I want to I wanna tell a story to everyone that is watching right now on Alejandro. Sure. So uh, JCT for Education, we support our students, our professionals. And one of the things that we do is uh, we pay close attention to resumes. So funny, short story enough, I, I see Alejandro and, I, and uh, Alejandro, I say, what are you doing? And Alejo, you were working for this resume platform, right? Yeah, yeah, I was working off of a couple of platforms, actually helping professionals, students, anybody that needed my services, just ask them a couple of questions. And from there, I would try to help them. So I, I asked Alejo, uh, may I take a look at one of the resumes that you're building? And this happens to be for a CEO, I remember, or CFO, marketing person at a big company, and, and I looked at his resume, I'm like, Alejo, did you do this resume? And he said, well, he sent me pieces all over on Word document, and, and we put it together. And I was like blown away the professional outcome of that resume. And, and we will talk about uh, later on. So that's, that's the story how I ended up with working with Alejo with resume building. And he has helped hundreds of professionals, students, uh, undergraduate, graduate students going into colleges and universities, uh, coaching them throughout the process. So Alejo, the first and foremost, how are you doing? How, how's I'm your doing health? good. 
How's COVID nineteen? No, uh, right now here, well, it's still it's still everybody is under quarantine, just like everybody in the U.S. So it's kind of empty streets, but thankfully we're all we're all safe, we're all healthy. So and hopefully it stays that way. Alejandro is right now located in Medellin, Colombia. Uh, was born and raised in New York. Where were you born in New York? Queens. In Queens? Which yeah, hospital? Uh, whew. I want to say the Queensboro Hospital, but I can't be 100% certain of that. Okay, Alejo. So let, let's go. Alejo, so once I saw that resume uh, from the CEO that you were supporting, and I'm like, I, I got so enthused. And the first thing that I, I thought, okay, how is my resume? You took a look at my resume. You, looked, you took a look at my LinkedIn. And immediately you make a lot of comments. One oh, yeah. comment that I love about LinkedIn was the URL. You want to talk about it? Yeah, actually, a lot of people, what they fail to realize is that they have the generic URL for LinkedIn. And you visit your profile and you look at the web URL, you're going to see generally it's just a bunch of numbers. If you actually go into your profile, edit, on the right-hand side, you're going to actually be able to see that you can edit your URL. And for the most part, you can just use your entire name. For me, Alejandro Merino, or Juan Camilo, it's Juan Camilo Tamayo. Anybody that wants to actually have their more professional, streamlined LinkedIn profile should actually do that. I highly recommend it. So, so for, for those LinkedIn profiles that you have seen, what percentage you've seen with those weird numbers and what percentage you've seen with their straight number? That's very name. Uh, Percentage-wise, I would say more than 60% with the numbers. Oh, a lot of people come to me. Yeah, they're, they're like, hey, can you modify my LinkedIn or give me tips? Uh, it's one of the services I include on the platforms. And when I go in, I generally log in for all my customers okay. and change everything around. Okay. Alejo, uh, LinkedIn is a, an incredible tool. Uh, we started doing these lives uh, almost three months ago with over 70-plus lives. And every day that we have the lives, we are, we are putting content on LinkedIn. I have seen a lot of activity on my LinkedIn. I mean, 300, 400, even 1,000 views on LinkedIn. Why LinkedIn is so important nowadays? LinkedIn has always seemed, for a long time now, I can't really say in years, but for a long time, I've noticed LinkedIn to be the dominant resource if you want a professional following or you're trying to connect with your peers, other professionals in the, in the field that you're in, whether it be hospitality, education, restaurants, I mean, if you're, whatever you're doing. But uh, lately, it seems like they're doing a little bit more with their marketing team. Um, outside of LinkedIn, I have no idea who else is doing professional profiles, okay. just on the web. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something right now where I think more and more people with time, they realize that you could actually have a community, a following, you can actually connect with a lot of people that maybe you lost connections with, kind of like Facebook, but for yeah. a professional. Yeah, well, and, and I will tell you, uh, running these lives, I, almost every day I have to go into LinkedIn to, to learn about the people that we are interviewing. And I will say around 70%, they have a decent uh, LinkedIn account. 30%, I will say 20%, uh, there's no good. 10%, yeah. they don't do anything. And... Yeah. And, and it is not just to find a job. That's what I've been telling my students as well. Um, I, I say, guys, if you're in high school, it will be awesome to start your LinkedIn profile, even in ninth grade, 10th grade, and to start developing. What would be your advice to, those, to your, those high school students that are watching right now and parents? I would say if you build a LinkedIn profile, whether you're in high school, you're just getting out, you're just getting in, like you're saying, I believe it's a very valuable resource, just getting kind of your digital footprint in the world. That way, if you're ever talking to somebody, whether it be a college, somebody in admissions in college or somebody's parents, and they want to know more about you, you could actually direct them to your LinkedIn profile, which is probably something they're not expecting. Yes, that, that is correct. And uh, last week, we had a student from Brazil, absolutely incredible student. She's running a volunteer program. She is actually, uh, all her class notes that she's doing right now, she's putting it on Google Classroom. And she sent me her resume. Her resume was super impressive. All the amount of community service, volunteer work, uh, academics, projects. And I told her, are you on LinkedIn? Because uh, when I launched her campaign last week, she already had like 
300 viewers on LinkedIn. And nice. say, no, I'm not on LinkedIn. I'm like, wow, you're missing an opportunity because you just mentioned universities are looking at LinkedIn. Absolutely. And, and they're, they're looking at, they're looking at Instagram. If your Instagram is open, well, they're going to look into it. But if you have LinkedIn, it is good. So tell us the process about a student building a resume and transferring that information into LinkedIn. How, what will be your recommendation? How do they do it? LinkedIn works with a very ATS style approach when it, when it comes to actually entering your information on the website. Um, ATS is really an application tracking system that a lot of companies, universities, everybody uses. Basically, if you have a resume that's made of pure graphics, it looks beautiful, it's never going to wind up in the hands of the recruiter or HR person. So when you're putting your information on LinkedIn, a lot of jobs, a lot of universities are looking for specific skill sets, specific experience, and they could actually go into each profile on the search, on the algorithms they use, and pull that information. So if you're not on there, you're missing a lot, a lot of opportunities. Okay, okay. Now, um, I'm a high school student, and I'm on ninth grade, and I yeah. never, ever done a resume. Where do, where do they start? How do they start? Well, if you're, if you're in ninth grade and you've never done a resume, um, I would definitely start with just Googling a couple of samples for high school student resumes, maybe visiting a couple of websites. One of the websites I like to use personally is thebalancedcareers.com. They have a lot of resources for everybody. Um, uh, something very important for students is a summary, a little biography about yourself, who you are, talking about your skills, Soft skills, hard skills, if you're good with anything with a computer, just obviously I mentioned that, any volunteer work that you've done, any, volu um, not volunteer work, I'm sorry, uh, volunteer work is important, but any kind of work that you've done outside of volunteering, something with students, something in the school, something for the community, anything, that's what I would recommend actually putting everything in your resume, as um, much. When I work in admissions uh, at two universities, uh, Clark University and Lynn University, Particularly, I was in charge of hiring uh, admission counselors, the staff for the Office of Admissions. So people will apply for jobs and HR will send me 100 resumes. I remember back then they were printed resumes. Mm -hmm. They will send me a folder. And I will tell you, I would love, I, I, imagine me with all my job and responsibility, how much time will I have to read 100 resumes? So, Not at all. I, so what's your preference, one page or two pages? No, I, I actually have done something my entire career with resumes. Um, personally, I like to stick to one page, but there are some students where I've actually gone and actually done two pages for resumes, academic resumes and professionals where I've actually had to go and do three or four pages. Yes. When it comes to a resume for a university, generally I try to stick to one page because it's just a little neater a little bit more, more concise, and I'm trying to pull as much useful information as I can from all the information I've gathered. But um, between one and two pages and actually submitting a physical document, I've actually always recommended somebody, and I don't know if anybody else does this, but that stack of 100 resumes that you had working at Lynn, and like you said, you're very busy. How does somebody make an approach? How does somebody make an impression without ever seeing your face? Now, if you print your resume on a white linen paper. It's thicker than stationary. It's a different texture than resume paper. So immediately you're actually different than any other candidate. And that's true. But nowadays, this is the electronic version of no more true. thick papers. So true. now my, my colleagues in admissions and colleagues around the world, they are just getting HR resumes by oh. electronic means. So, I, I'm a very, I love colors. I, I absolutely love colors. I love graphics. Uh, you coach me through an infographic resume. It looks absolutely. spectacular. Thank you. You did a great job. So kudos well, to you. But I will tell you, let, let's, let's go when, when we were doing the hiring process or when we were looking at students' resumes, uh, of course, they can submit that through the common application. They put their 10 activities and so forth. But as students like the one in Brazil, they've done research. They, ha they have done so much. They cannot fit that resume into the activity section of the common application. 
So when I was reading resume, do you know where I started reading? Uh, where? Of course, the name. Sure. And then that little blurb that you mentioned, why, yeah. why, who are you? And yeah. then there is a section down below where our hobbies or travel experience or things like that. And, and, and I used to, used to enjoy just to learning the human component of that person. Oh, I love chess or I love, I don't know, I, um, I love uh, motorcycles or whatever. So sure. you're, you're looking at that human component. Are you building that uh, hobbies and resumes? I, I like to add a bit, of a, a bit about the hobbies and the actual summary. Okay. It really depends how lengthy I want to make the resume. If, if by adding a hobby section and all their activities brings me to a second page and there's 80% white space, I'm going to try to concise everything I can into the summary section who they are, where they've been, what they've done, some of their hobbies, and most of it's going to be their volunteer work. A lot of it's going to be where they've been, what they've done for the community, where they are in school, and just giving an overall big picture of that student. What, what What's the best resume you've ever seen and the worst resume you've ever seen? <laughs> uh, somebody contracted me on the, one of the platforms, and the resume, I think the – name of the person was actually in maybe a, a 52 level font and it was just horrible. I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know if they built this resume or somebody built them the resume, but basically it was something night and day in comparison. Actually what we did together for the, in, the infographic that I did for you, um, that's basically the new style of resumes that are coming into play. Okay. That's infographics for me are the next generation of resumes. That's pretty much going to be the standard. In my so, opinion. We, so thank you for uh, putting me ahead of time. And I also <laughs> want to thank EA University in Spain because I took that class with them about infographics and it was nice. absolutely spectacular. Um, do you think LinkedIn will update their platform so we, it, it can be more graphic oriented, my f more friendly user? Because right now it's still really dry. Yeah, you know, it's uh, LinkedIn allows you to update the banner. It allows you to add an image for, for example, all your, let's say you have five employers' histories. You can add an image. You can add anything you want to the actual sections of your employment. However, you can even actually add a PDF of your actual resume in your About Me section. But for some reason, what I don't understand is that LinkedIn, when you add your resume, like the PDF, you want people to see how beautiful it is. You want people to look at your experience, everything, but it's very pixelated. Okay. I, I don't know what they're doing exactly on the software side of things, but they need to fix a lot. I mean, it would be nice, but. No, 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 no. I think, I think that you're absolutely right. And I'm thinking how many compet com competitors are up there saying, you know what? Your platform is getting old and uh, we're going to beat you guys if you don't move quickly. You think that's yeah. happening and um, project development would... is working? I wouldn't be surprised if there's somebody around the corner that will take the range from LinkedIn away at some point, but I do believe that LinkedIn does have a leg up on everybody because they're the only ones that you really hear about. Uh-huh. Correct. Correct. I mean, Cor correct. Now, uh, on, on, on resumes, let's say it's not a LinkedIn, the student doesn't have a LinkedIn. Athletic resumes, you know they have pictures. Okay, and the coaches, they want to see pictures, they want to see links to YouTube videos and so forth. For in general, do you recommend pictures? Yes or not? For the United States, no, but for overseas, I would say yes. That's kind of the standard in Europe and those that side of the world. Uh, for here in the U.S., a lot of the employers that I'm at least used to seeing, if you put a photo, they're going to look at it very strangely. They're not, it's not something they're used to here. Okay. But, 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 but check this out. The resume is up on LinkedIn. So what's the difference? No, I mean, look, if you have your resume, if you have a regular resume and you put a photo, people are going to look at it with a weird vibe. And okay. the last thing you want in an interview or somebody looking at your resume is to give them any kind of inclination of a strange thought, any kind of bad impressions. So you want to stick to the standard, and the standard is no photo. But, of course, if you're doing something like an athletic resume, of course, you're going to have a photo. If you're doing something like an infographic, of course, you're going to have a photo as well. And, yeah. 
for for those of students that are watching, uh, I will definitely recommend that your 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 videos uh, they are short, they are to the point. Remember, uh, coaches they only have just a few minutes to watch your video, so you want to make sure that is clear that you have little arrows pointing who are you because sometimes if you're playing soccer there are there are 11 players down there and then the coach will say oh where is number nine where is on where is number 10 so you want to you want to help me uh telling uh, students what you like to see on uh links for athletic yeah, resumes absolutely if you're if you're a, if you're an athletic student playing soccer playing basketball anything you're doing and you do a video either yourself or you pay somebody on a platform like Fiverr or, or Upwork. If you want to do something in that realm, which is awesome, I highly recommend it. But I also recommend you do exactly what Juan Camilo is saying. You put a circle around your picture, whoever you are playing on the field, sh shooting, shooting the ball, making a dunk, hitting the ball in the soccer field. I mean, something else I, I really don't see is timestamps. I've actually put a lot of timestamps in for the students on the actual athletic resumes. Okay. Um, when you're making when you're making goals, when you're stealing the ball, I mean, how you're playing, contact information, coaches information, just anything that you think would be beneficial to you. Obviously, don't keep it nothing over five minutes. I yeah. think five minutes is way too long. The shorter, the better. But yeah. Hey, Alejo, those those two platforms that you mentioned, they have music soundtracks, they have everything so the students can do it themselves? Yeah, yeah, actually, if you make a video and you're looking for a soundtrack, you could pay as little as $5 and have somebody add a music soundtrack to that video. And, and how much, let's say a student wants to build his, his or her own uh, athletic resume, how much is it uh, on those platforms? The platforms generally, it really varies. I mean, there are people that do it for very little money, but you got to really, you got to ask yourself what kind of quality you want in your resume. Okay, okay. Somebody you're paying, somebody you're paying very little money, $20, $30, $40, that's probably going to do a very quick job. Or the professionals that are doing it for more than $100 that are going to give you an outstanding resume. And that, and that's, I'm talking about the link, the YouTube link. Uh, ah, okay. That's what I'm talking about. Ah, okay, okay. No, I mean, for the actual video, uh, for you playing sports, you just give them a bunch of video clips and they actually put it together for you. It's right around 40 to $70. It really depends how the transition affects what kind of, what they're doing to the video. Okay, okay. Yeah, because the college application process is already lengthy and, and adding a new thing. So, but I know that the athletes say that's another hoop that have to go through. Uh, it's just to edit their videos uh, and sometimes they don't know, they don't know how to do it so they need to Absolutely. outsource what's the name of that platform again that uh, assists uh, with uh, videos and clips there are two there's fiverr.com f-i-v-e-r-r -R, and okay. upwork say They're the second one again upwork upwork okay yeah th thank thank you for mention for mentioning that so we talk about length uh, you rec highly recommend one pager. That's that's good. What a style? I mean, uh, what fonts do you recommend? Let's let's focus right now on on high school students. If you were to give an advice, what font would you recommend? What size? And then we will move to graduate students and professionals. Go ahead. Let's start with high school students. Sure. Uh, the font is something tricky because if you're sending a PDF, it could be any font you want. My personal font is Times New Roman. I actually love that font. Okay. Um, if you're sending a Word document for any reason, which you really shouldn't be, um, you have to really understand the person receiving this Word document may not have, for example, a special font like Calibri. Not every computer has it. So okay. if your resume looks spectacular in Calibri, one page, two pages, whatever the case may be, you send it to somebody. They open it. Their computer doesn't actually have that font installed. It'll default to Arial. Okay. And it changes the complete rhythm of your resume. It could be now four pages. It could be changing the entire everything. Okay. But um, generally, I like to stick to Times New Roman, uh, Work Sans, which is actually a very nice font as well. And it really depends the size. I mean, I play a lot with margins, uh, font sizing, and line spaces just to make sure everything fits. Man, those margins, those bullets, how do you do it? I mean, uh, I, it's, it's a pain. No, I hear you. I mean... 
It really depends how much information I'm working with on, on one particular student. If I want to keep it at one page, two pages, if I'm on two pages and I see that there's something, there's a lot of, there's a lot of missing information or a lot of white space. I try to add more information, but at the same time, I don't want the reader to get bored. Okay. You want to keep the reader's attention. So that's when you actually start adding line spaces. Go ahead. Yes, Alejo. And what about for professionals? Like uh, you're out of college and you actually want to move uh, into the professional field. Would you stick with Times New Roman or what do you do? What do you recommend? Yeah, actually, to be honest, I really enjoy that font. It's, I believe it's universally solid for everybody. I mean, okay. high school students, college students, professionals. I mean, it's just a very, I wish I could show it to you on screen, but it's just a very professional font to use on your resume, especially if you're using it on a resume, a CV, even an infographic. Mm -hmm. It's a font that I really enjoy. Now, let, let's work for templates. Um, let's say the ninth grader wants to create his own resume, his own resume. Which templates would you recommend that are free of, and I just plug in the information? Uh, templates can be, I'm not very savvy when it comes to actual templates. I look at resumes, for example, via Google Images. I want to get some inspiration. And from there, you know, it really based on if you want to go chronological or functional on your resumes. If you want to put the experience you have first, obviously, if you're in school, it's going to be all your classes, what you've done for volunteer work, a summary. But um, yeah, when it comes to templates, I'm sorry, but I, I just don't work with a lot of templates. No, no problem, man. That's fair enough. So you're a very visual learner. And for, for you, let's say when you, when you graduated from high school and you created your own resume for that first security job, how, how was your resume? Oh, man. I actually remember it. I, uh, I had my summary built. How do I say it, it was interesting. I, I like to believe I did a very good job, but looking at it today, it was obviously horrendous. Um, I did put a summary at the very beginning. And back some years ago, your summary used to be the objective section. And over the years, it looks like the word objective, when you're actually writing about yourself and what you're looking to do or what you're looking to gain from a job you're looking for, an employer or a school you're trying to go to, the word objective is frowned upon nowadays. So okay. it's better to put summary, it's better to put bio, just stick to summary. Okay. But I had objectives and I had a bunch of information in the objectives. Just all my years of experience, all my years, just, you know, whatever volunteer work I was doing at the time. And then it, re it really depends where you're trying to apply for, like for your first job, for your school. If you want to be as detailed as possible, and explain everything you've ever done, including credentials, certifications, and you want to build a CV. If you want to be brief, then you want to be building a resume. Okay. You're putting a smile to me because uh, when, I, when I was about to graduate from college, I remember going to the career services, uh, building my resume, and I remember that word objective. And that yeah. was very common. I mean, we all use it. I'm like, objective of what? I just want to find a yeah. job. And uh, just to create a short story, uh, I had a really spectacular conversation with uh, a dear friend of mine. He hires a lot of professionals, young professionals in the television industry. And he said, I'm bored of seeing the same old, same old 1990 resumes. I want to see more of the infographic resumes. And sure. those, are the, those are the cutting edge resumes. Let's talk about infographic resume. Uh, if you kind of give a little brief uh, outline of, of what, a, what an infographic resume is. Yeah, an infographic really is as much information as it would probably be in your CV, however, displayed in a much more tasteful manner. You know, having graphs, having colors, having images, maybe that's something that corresponds to your history, having a logo, something you're proud of. Honestly, it could be the city you're living in, a picture in the background, just faded transparency. Um, infographics, I believe, first it was resumes and CVs, now infographics. It's basically really just your CV. But, yeah, I mean, like your friend is saying, you're bored of seeing the old style of resume. You want to see something new, something fresh. So that's where all the colors come in. That's where all the images, that's where the graphs, that's where the bullets in different colors that are matching certain graphs. 
So it's kind of like everything ties in. You have to make it very tasteful, but also be to the point what you're trying to deliver. Alejo, um, what's the difference between a resume and a CV? Uh, uh, well, a resume, generally you're sticking to one, one maximum two pages. I generally try to stick to one page. I have had some professionals and students alike where the information is so dense, you need to go over one page to two pages, and that's okay. okay. Back in the day, it was frowned upon to go over one page, but honestly, nowadays, it's not that big of a deal. Obviously, if it's over two pages, it really depends. Depends what you've been doing. If you're a professional, you could have more than two pages. I've done up to three and four. And a CV is generally hitting that page marker when you're going to three pages, four pages, because on a CV, everything is more detailed. You have to showcase the work you've done in your life, the credentials, uh, research, affiliations, anything, anything that has to do with your work, history. And like I said, the research has to be in your CV. That way, they could reference everything you've done. A, it's more like a, a journal. Of exactly. I remember uh, nine years ago when I was job hunting before I founded JCT for Education. Uh, I did a CV, and it's it's not it's not easy. It's it's, it's a lot of work to write a CV. Uh, yeah. It takes it takes time. It takes it takes courage. It takes yeah. inspiration. Do you find your people that want to build C CVs? are into it or they are trying to avoid that task? A lot of people that come to me to build them a CV honestly don't know the difference between the resume and the CV. Uh -huh. but they have asked me what the differences are and that way when I explain it to them, then they choose, to choose, and they choose me to make a resume for them. However, okay. the people that actually I've built CVs for, which I've built many, they have so much experience. It takes more than a week just to go through the information, trying to piece everything together correctly. And then even when you have all the information, you need to make sure it just sounds well. It flows well for the reader. Uh, no, no, absolutely. And uh, I, I, you're amazing. I mean, you've been doing this for years and you've done a phenomenal job coaching professionals, coaching the students, telling them, cut this, do this. And, and it's an educational process. So as an ed as educator yourself, you're teaching even us uh, with the infographic uh, project that we both did and with your imagination and so forth, I learned a lot through you. So what's, what's next? What's next for the future of resumes, CVs? Uh, what is it? Well, the future, I think, is here with the infographics. Anything above infographics, honestly, I believe is going to resort to some sort of presentation work. Um, I believe, I mean, a lot of people do presentations already, but if you could somehow the future brings a nice presentation of a resume to a job interview yes. and can streamline something there. I mean, that would just, whoever does that the first time is going to wow the employer and they're going to get that job. Alejo, when, when you're assisting uh, professionals with our CVs or resumes, what about cover letters? What are you, what, what's a winning cover letter and what's it a really bad cover letter? <laughs> uh, cover letters I offer to a lot of my clients and the students I don't, I don't touch cover letters with students where you just focus on the resumes, but um, a cover letter shouldn't be very long. A cover letter is maybe an introduction, a few lines of introducing yourself, how you found the job, how you think you fit the job position, and then some of your accomplishments. After your accomplishments, you want to tell the person, thank you for all their time in order to, in, sorry, thank you for all the time they took in reading your resume and everything of that nature and then just thanking them, signing and sending with your resume. However, a bad, a bad cover letter is really just a very long piece of information with no bullets, no real direction. I mean, I've seen cover letters where it's just talking about somebody's qualifications and abilities, but they don't ever stop talking about it. Okay. They don't thank the person. They don't, they don't seem to show what direction they're trying to go in. They're just trying to talk about themselves, which is not really all that appealing to somebody sometimes. Okay, so yeah. let's, let's do this in one minute, this exercise. A sure. student is building his, her resume. And tell, tell him or her your tips and recommendations, very briefly. Tips and recommendations for a student building a resume for work? For work, yeah, it could be for work. And then for, okay. for academics, go ahead. Okay. Well, I mean, if you're going to build your resume, obviously build your summary first. Talk a little bit about yourself, your volunteer work you've done, 
who you are as a person, that you have good interpersonal skills, that you're a problem solver and a team player. Everybody wants to know you're a team player. Nobody wants to hire somebody that doesn't know how to work in a team. Obviously, put your volunteer work, any experience you have actually working. And then if you have any travel experience, you want to put that at the very bottom. That way they know you're well-traveled. Okay. An academic uh, resume. A student is building his own or her own academic resume. Recommendations? Well, for the recommendation on the acad academic resume, you want to actually still have the summary. Because the, problem, the thing with students is that you don't have a lot of information unless you've done a lot of volunteer work, a lot of classes. So that's what you want to do. If you have a lot of volunteer work and a lot of classes, a very short summary or no summary at all. Okay. Okay. Because right there, you could actually fill the page more with all the volunteer work, the classes, extracurricular activities, any sports you're playing. And that is going to speak more volumes than any summary could. Alejo, let's fast forward. The student is third year in college. Uh, they have not untouched their resume from high school. And now they're looking for an internship on, for a real job. Suggestions for that real job coming up. Internship. <laughs> Okay, so for it, <laughs> all right, so for an internship, what we're looking at is that the job wants to see you're responsible. So again, anything that you've done to showcase that you're a volunteer, that's going to show them that you're responsible. Anything that showcases that you're in an organization in school, something where you're actually helping other students, something where you're doing something for the community, um, all this information really helps you. If you're looking for that internship, that's what they're looking for, responsibility and somebody that they could count on. So anything you could add, if you don't have a lot of information to go off of, definitely write in the summary. You're a reliable, hard worker. Anything that you've experienced in college that actually resonates in some way towards that job you're looking for. And now you have uh, that same student just graduated from, <laughs> no, graduated from college, four or five years into the professional field, and that student wants to change a career. Tips for that student that now is a professional. Okay, so if a professional wants to change a career, obviously if you're in the hospitality industry and you're trying to go into maybe something sales or vice versa, you just want change. Um, generally, what I can recommend, ah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a little bit tough. I mean, honestly. I'm throwing a lot of questions. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. But if you're trying to change fields, obviously the, something very important to do is research the field you're trying to get into. See what they're looking for. If you want to jump into hospitality, you need to be really good with customer service, for example. So you need to highlight customer service. Any skill that they're looking for in that field you're trying to jump into, you need to make sure either you have it or you learn it. Okay. Because if you've been in sales all your life and then you want to go for some reason into the restaurant business, those two don't really line up. But you need to know what drives a restaurant manager, for example, and what drives a sales manager. There's two totally completely different things. Okay, I see. No, Alejo, I, it's been, I've been watching you and I have seen your transformation from the hospitality industry now working in education, working in a very tough uh, area, which is career services. And you are the master of, uh, of career services. I am so impressed the way that you navigate LinkedIn. I am so impressed the way you coach students how to build their resumes. I'm so impressed how you work with professionals, whether they're CEOs, uh, actors, whatever. You're, you're, you're so versatile in navigating. So, and I, I don't mean to embarrass you for those of you watching. When I hire people, I want the best. I want the best for the team. And, and Alejandro mentioned that he is a team player, but I, not to embarrass him, he's my cousin, he's my grandson. <laughs> not my grandson, my grandchild. <laughs> grandchild. <laughs> my grandchild and uh when when I, we were hiring someone uh that was moving up and unfortunately people changed careers and i uh, i tell the team we need a career service specialist for jct for education and i bumped into his father and i said what is he doing no i don't know he's doing like career services resume and i take a i took a look at that first resume that you were building on that day for a successful ceo And yeah. I'm like, wow, this guy can work really well. And then you've been with us for over a year now, and you do a fantastic job, man. I'm so proud Thank you, of man. you. And uh, not my grandchild, my gut child. <laughs> There you go. And, uh, I didn't want to correct you. And uh, he knows he, I'm very tough. I'm very strict. But 
Man, you deliver so well and your customer service skills are phenomenal. Muchas gracias. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Alejo, uh, just we go. We got to go off. I know you have some work to do. I got to I got to do some work after this live. But uh, any final thoughts? Uh, any any learning lessons from this COVID-19 social distancing? You know, it's honestly it's affected the world in a very hard way. It makes you kind of think of where you are, where you've been. Uh, something for me, at least, is that if I was in Miami at the moment, it'd be very hard. That's where I spent most of my most of my life in Miami, even if I'm from New York. But you know, who would expect to have a world virus affect everybody in our lifetime? But yeah, I mean, just things that kind of happen, and you just have to try to make the best of it. No, I know, and and you're in my hometown. You're me and my dad. I'm here in the oh, yeah. U.S. So Alejo, take care of yourself. Thank you for being a good family member and a, an outstanding professional. No, because you're my, my cousin, but you are one of the best I've known in the industry for, for career service. So love you, man. And Maria Cristina says hi. Emily Debson, Anna Swistenov, Estamayo, uh, uh, Christian Safi, Fernanda. I mean, you have a lot of people saying hi. So thank you, man. And we will come back and see what's the future of resumes and careers. So stay tuned for those of you watching. Juan Catamayo with Alejandro Merino, career expert on building resumes and LinkedIn profiles. He's the best. And Alejo, thank you. Absolutely, man. Have you a can find this morning. video on YouTube and IGTV. Hasta la vista. Ciao. Bye. Bye-bye. Gracias.